Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. My name is Noel McAvoy. And I'm Scott Ramp. That was Asap Badonai on piano. What's up? Was that Asap? That's Asa? Guantanamara. Nice. And also, you guys, today is Asap's birthday. Yes, happy birthday, Asap. Happy birthday, Asap. Thank you, thank you, thank That's you. That's awesome. So how are you feeling today? Young and spry? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a young old man. Yep. He really is. Yeah. <laughs> 58 today. That's awesome. Thank you. What are your plans today, Asa? I'm probably going to sleep off the rest of this cold that I was dealing with Aww. the other day. Yeah. I'm feeling better now. But... That's good. Nice. Yep. Sweet. Thanks. Well, how was your day? But of yeah. course, uh, hopefully uh, your day gets a little better because the weather certainly is not going to get <laughs> too much better. Um, it is currently 46 degrees outside, 90% um, chance of rain. Of course, I walked here and it was already raining. It's pretty yeah. rainy. And it's going to decrease as uh, tonight rolls in. And then, of course, you know, it's going to be mostly cloudy tonight. Thursday, we'll have pretty much the same amount of um, rain tonight as Thursday. Thursday night, uh, more showers. Throughout the whole week, we just have a whole bunch of showers. And I keep asking myself, where was this during, uh, uh, you know, planting spring. season? Yeah. You know, seeding season and springtime and perfect time. It's true. Well, I've told you guys how I have flowers blooming, right? Yeah. I totally have flowers growing and it's like the end of October. That's it's ridiculous. very weird. Like I was walking to um, work, um, I mean like yesterday because it was light outside and you mm -hmm. could barely, you know, like of course in the morning I, you can barely, I can barely see anything or people can barely see me when I'm crossing the intersection when I walk here. Um, during the day, like there's perfect amount of leaves on the ground and on the um, on the tree. So basically you're in a whirlwind of yellow leaves. Oh, it's and beautiful. And it looks really cute. Yeah, uh -huh. it's really nice. The leaves are absolutely gorgeous this year. I feel like they're more vibrant than other years. Yep. But maybe it's because of all the rain we're getting. We have a uh, we have some guests on from the Missoula Asian Service to talk about senior and your companions. We'll have them on in a little bit. Um, but of course, you can find out more information about your weather by going to nationalweatherservice.gov. But of course, you can find out more about us by logging on to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. You can also like us on our Facebook page. You can follow us on Twitter at wakeupmissoula. MCAT also has a Twitter. You guys can follow us at MCAT TV Missoula. You can like us on Facebook and to find out more information, just check us out on MCAT.org. Yes, and of course, uh, today um, I have a city council report. Uh, I'm just basically kind of reviewing what they talked about city council. They didn't really talk about much, but it's going to be nice and short, and I'm going to just kind of give you the rough around it later on the show. But of course, is there any um, new news items? You yeah, want to talk about? I've got a couple news, new news items. It's hard to say in one. Um, and so my first new news item is going to be from the Missoulian. So over the weekend, you guys all know of Garden City Harvest, which hosts the Peace Farm. And so every year they raise pigs that they slaughter as a, like for educational purposes. <laughs> so over the weekend, it looked like there was some vandalism that was a put on by the Animal Liberation Front, and they spray painted murderer in bright red letters on the front of Garden City Harvest's headquarters on Hickory Street in downtown Missoula. And so they think that it was the Animal Liberation Front because it was signed with ALF. And um, these animal rights organization has also has has had confrontation in the past, and it seems like Garden City Harvest has had a lot of like threats towards them about the soldering of these pigs. Yeah. But they're for educational purposes, and they're for children to come and watch how it's done, and then they get to learn where their meat is from, and you know how the whole farm to table food process happens. Yeah. So I think that it's a good thing, you know, and they're hired, they're raising these animals, like in. In yeah. um, for educational purposes, yeah. So that happened over the weekend, which I didn't hear about until today. So that's a little wild. Yeah, I, but of course, you know, uh, I can always empathize with all sides. Just kind of see how they're going through. But they're t they're, they go went at it at a very um, extreme approach mm -hmm. by also threatening um, people. Yes. From what I saw on the little storyline as well as what you said that there was some um, threat. So of course, if you know anything or hear anything, you can always uh, call uh, the police department as well yes. or at Crime Stoppers, which is seven two one four 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 four, which is oddly close to my uh, parents' home um, number as well. <laughs> but I'm not saying that. Do people call your parents? <laughs> Oh, all the time. Really? No, uh, like it's so ridiculous how close the numbers are. It's that's it, funny. Yeah. <laughs> well, my next news item is that one of a former pop star. Well, he was a pop star in the '80s. Pete Burns, who's the lead singer of 1980s British pop band Dead or Alive, died on Monday. Aww. And so they had that hit single, "You Spin Me Right Round." It's like you spin me right round, baby. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right round. Was that the only song? 
Um, no, they had lots of other songs, but that was like their one hit wonder, I think. Oh, I thought that. But uh, he was very into. They called his look very like and- androgynous because he dressed like a man and a woman. But you know, I guess it. Yeah, and so, but he also had a love for plastic surgery, and so wow. if you guys, so if you guys, anytime you guys look up like bad celebrity plastic surgeries, he's the first one up. It's terrible. Type in Pete Burns plastic surgeries, but yeah. he died, and so rest in peace. You get uh, he had some awesome music and some really bad plastic surgery. <laughs> <laughs> and then my last news story, which I I so these news stories, I think um, are I don't know pretty they're ridiculous. Kind of funny. They're a little ridiculous. I chose ridiculous news stories today. Yes, I did. So this one is about Justin Bieber, <laughs> how he stormed off stage through mid concert because everyone was making too much noise. so everyone was screaming and being all excited and happy you know and he was like stop stop I just want to connect with you guys and they wouldn't stop screaming so he stopped doing a show and then he dropped his mic and went backstage and then he came on later on during the show but he didn't talk to the crowd he just sang and then he left he was like I'm not going to dress you guys yeah, but he did this. He did this again in Oslo, Norway, um, almost a year ago in 2015. He got frustrated because the crowd was yelling too loud as he would try to wipe something that spilled on the floor during his performance. <laughs> so he was trying to wipe the floor. Yeah, and he was like, and he quoted, quoted, let's see. What are you doing? I said, stop it, guys. Yo, listen to me. I'm trying to wipe the floor. Give me a second. Like, throughout his performance. Like, what are you doing, Beeps? It just shows how much of a diva he is. Um, and so those are some ridiculous news stories to entertain you guys for your Wednesday. I guess I should have said that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what a diva, right? Yeah. And but So I got my stories from USA Today, CNN, no, US Today, CNN, as well as the Missoulian. Yep. And of course, uh, I do have some new programming on, so I'm going to show you guys that, and when we come back, we'll have our guest from the Missoula Asian Services, um, Senior Companions. I did signals, uh, intelligence, then I got out and came back to Montana. What happened to me in the Navy was a profound transformation. I left kind of a chump. I came back with a sense of purpose. I, I had to get out of the Navy abruptly because of a medical issue, and so I, in retrospect, I, I realized that I went through some, some issues with that, but it, it basically gave me a frame of mind and a sense of purpose that I could use when I approach everything in my life. As simple as it is that I will give you after three and a half years at the commissioner's office and after working on 190 cases, including a dozen cases that directly concerned the 2010 primary, Republican primary election races involving nine candidates, and now we have three involving the corporate entities that were involved in those candidates. Hey guys, we're back here with the Missoula Asian Services. We're here with Joe and Laura, and they're here to talk about Senior Companions, so please, take it away. Well, thank you for having us today. As you know, the Senior Companion Program is a part of Missoula Aging Services' mission, which is to promote the independence, dignity, and health of older adults and those who care for them. And Senior Companions are volunteers who enable older adults and adults with disabilities to remain living in their home longer safer and independently. Nice, and so how many clients do you guys serve? We currently have 102 clients being served by 23 senior companions, and we have a waiting list of about 60 more people waiting to be served, so we really do have a great need to bring on more volunteers. What's the criteria to be a senior companion? To be a senior companion, you need to be age 55 and older, 
And if you meet income eligibility requirements, you can receive a stipend and mileage reimbursement for nice. that. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, nice. You know, Missoula Aid and Services is great with a lot of benefits for people who do volunteer with Missoula Aid and Services. Um, you guys, uh, let's see. Um, what what is uh, senior companions to you? It, like this is a question for both of you. What does it mean to you? For me, as the volunteer coordinator, senior companions do a work and a service to our community to help connect people who are homebound and um, give them a sense of feeling less lonely and happy and also give comfort to families who may be the caregivers and be away from their family or possibly uh, that are caring for their family. It's another set of eyes and ears on their loved one. But Joe is a senior companion, so what is it to you? Senior companion to me is serving the community. I have all this giving inside of myself, that's just who I naturally am, so it's a matter of giving of that back to people because that's what we're really you know called to do um, as far as what the senior companions do um, we give of our time um, it's worked out with the aging services they pair us up with with seniors who are in need depending on what they do um, we work out a time from when people um, we can visit with them whether it's in the morning or afternoon that's all very flexible so um, it's really a matter of communicating out to people um, who need to come in and really serve. You know. And so as a senior companion, what services do you provide for these people other than companionship? For the clients yes. themselves? Mm -hmm. You know, I think Joe being one to do that all the time would be great to answer. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's as much as it could be just going over to their house and spending time with them if they're homebound. If they need to get out in the community, I take them shopping, I take them out to breakfast. Um, there's a old fella who grew up in Sanders County up in Plains. And in his last days, I would drive him the 45 miles up to Dixon for lunch every once in a while. You know, so he could reconnect with all the folks. He was the historian of Sanders County. So in his last days, he used to go up and visit his old cronies and have a great time. I bet you heard a lot of really cool <laughs> yeah. stories. And I was, yeah, oh yeah, and I was able to take him out and do things like that. Um, I should say that as encouragement to folks who are out there who would be interested in, in serving the community and the po folks in need, Francis of Assisi said, it is in the giving of ourselves that we receive. And that's what we're really called to do. And if I could, I have this little thing to read. Of course. Yeah, go ahead. Um, use your voice for kindness, your ears for compassion, your hands for charity, your mind for truth, and your heart for love. Nice. I love that. That's awesome. That's great. How can people get involved with you guys? Where, they, where can they contact you? Sure. Missoula Aging Services has several different ways for people to volunteer. They can call the agency at 728-7682 and ask for Laura and the Senior Companion Program. Or they can jump onto our website. We have a volunteer page at missoulaagingservices.org. And of course, people can stop by the agency anytime. Awesome. Thank you very much. Is there anything else that you guys want to tell us before we let you go? I think, um, as Joe said, to give of yourself, that's truly one of the benefits of being a volunteer and a companion because there is record that you can benefit from being a volunteer. Your health will improve, mm -hmm. your friendships will improve, and you get to be a part of the community that's also serving the community. So I just encourage people to check us out. Awesome. Thank you very much, Laura, and thank you very much, Joe. Thank you. Thank you. We'll be right back after this, everyone. Hi, I'm Kate. What are you doing Tuesday, November 1st? Do you know that you can vote early in the state of Montana? That's right. Come to the University Center Atrium between 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. on Tuesday, November 1st to update your personal information, receive a ballot, and even cast your vote. 
This event is open to all eligible voters in Missoula County, not just students. If you're an absentee voter, you can also return your ballot to the elections office at the event that day. Have you changed your last name, moved, or had any other changes to your personal information? If so, you'll need to update this information with the elections office in order to be eligible to vote in the 2016 general election. This event will help you skip the long wait times we anticipate on Tuesday, November 8th. Also be sure to log on to my voter page at myvoterpagemt.com to check your voter registration status. If it says you're an inactive voter or have outdated information, stop by and update that information during the event. Make sure you're election ready and come hang out with us on November 1st. We are back and I've got some events for your Wednesday. Okay, also, you know, I've started doing the National Day thing. So today is National Day of the Deployed, National Mule Day, so maybe you can like ride a mule, hang out with one, National Pumpkin Day, so get everything pumpkin, and National Mincemeat Day, so make your pies. Make a pumpkin pie, make a mincemeat pie, and you can feed it to a mule, something like that. Okay, so now I have got some events for you. We've got Pole Fitness over at Mask Studio starting at 9 a.m. Also at 9 a.m. is the Part 2 uh, Develop Module Lightroom class over the Le Dickinson Lifelong Learning Center. So that starts at 9 a.m. And what it is is Lightroom is a really, really handy and easy to use photo organizing software. You can edit, you can uh, organize all your photos on there. It's incredi incredibly user friendly and it's awesome. So they'll teach you all about that. What you're gonna need is a hard drive um, and a camera, obviously, and some photos, as well as um, a two-button mouse. Yeah, so you're gonna need a mouse that you know has a left and a right button. Yeah. Okay, so that's at the Dickinson Lifelong Learning Center. At the Missoula Public Library, we have open hours in makerspace. It starts at 10 a.m. And then at the Learning Center at Red Willow, there's yoga for wellness with Rasa O'Neill starting at 10 a.m. Um, it's forty dollars for four weeks or twelve dollars to drop in. And then at the Children's Museum of Missoula, we have shaving cream art that starts at 11. At noon at the University of Montana is cross-cultural comparisons of NGO best practices. Um, so it looks like it's gonna be Southeast, it's gonna be a lecture about Southeast Asian nonprofit leaders who are going to share their experiences with grassroots NGO work in the lower Mekong region, um, comparing their best practices with lessons learned from nonprofits in Montana. That's really cool. Oh my goodness. Wow, sweet, you guys. That sounds neat. All right, that'll be in the LA building in room 103. At the Missoula Public Library, they've got easy steps to ebooks. So, ebooks are resources available in the library, but if you don't know how to use them, this class will cover all the resources and all the basics of using that so you can better access the library. Um, and so, that's going to be at 12 30 to 1 30 in the computer classroom. You can call 721 2665 um, to register. At the Dickinson Lifelong Learning Center, there is a Caring for Your Laptop workshop that starts at 1 o'clock. That goes until 4, it's only $42. And then today at the Public Library, they've got an afternoon matinee movie that starts at 2 o'clock. You guys can call 721-2665 to find out the title of the movie. And then at NAMI Missoula, which is located at 202 Brook Street, they've got their crafts. This is a weekly arts and crafts group for adults living with persistent mental health issues. At the Missoula Public Library, they've got Middle School Writers. It starts at 3.30. This is for grades uh, 6 through 9 to give and give good feedback, play with words, and eat some chocolate. At the Top Hat Lounge, is sharing in the groove. There's celebrating the music of fish. It starts at 4.30. It's a fish-themed happy hour, audio show, and, you know, they'll have drink specials. And trivia, I think. They'll have other stuff. At the Downtown Dance Collective, they've got ballets, the greatest hits, adult ballet class. It starts at 5 o'clock. And then over at Orchard Homes Country Club is the Missoula Business Women's Fall Social. So there's a 530, and so this is for those that are interested in joining their network. Um, it's gonna be a Taste Buds cooking, so it's gonna be a Taste Buds cooking class from 530 to 830. It'll include a social hour and a cooking class. Um, yeah, and so you can go to discovermbn.com if you wanna know more. 
<laughs> All right, and then over at Herb, Green Herb, Green Path Herb School, they've got their pharmacy series. They're going to be making herbal macerations. It starts at six o'clock. If you guys want to sign up for that, you can call 274-2009. Then, at Imagination Brewing Company, is their Imagination Jam Society, public jam. So it starts at 6. You can uh, bring your instrument and you can jam out with other people. They are showing Halloween at the Roxy Theater at 7 o'clock. And then also at 7 at the Sunrise Saloon is Country Dance Lessons with instructor Kathy Clark. It's only $5 for a lesson. Dracula is playing at the University of Montana at 7.30. And then also at the MCT Center for the Performing Arts, also 7.30, is Tarzan. So, uh, yeah, with MCT. And then my last event is going to be the UM Jazz Band Concert Series with special guest artist Creative Swinging. So that'll be in the Denison Theater that starts at 7.30. And it's featuring four big bands, plus the Institute for Creative Music Guest Artists, Chris Teal on drums, uh, Nick Frinzer on trombone, and Chris Ziamba on piano. So it's $11 for public. Um, yeah, but that's all I've got for you going on right now. Uh, up next is Musical Notes with Days Off Adam and I. But first, happy birthday to you. Yeah, happy birthday. Yeah, happy birthday. I wasn't expecting that. Oh, thank you. Uh, I think camera one's good. Okay, hang on, everyone. I gotta like this. Well, I think it's kind of you guys. Yes, happy birthday, Bob. Oh, already close to the camera. Okay. Okay, and then ASAP, you have to blow your candle out. Ooh, ASAP is cool. 58 nice, right? today, everyone. Woo! Right, well, I hope you'll help me celebrate eating this year. Yes, we definitely will. Good. Happy birthday, Asaph. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you for all that you do for us. And we love you and appreciate you. Well, thank you. That's kind. Yeah. What I was going to say before we start this musical notes, what do Hillary Clinton mm -hmm. and yours truly have in common? I don't know. Today's her birthday, too. What? <laughs> but, you know, Hillary doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> it's all about you today. Said yeah. everybody who likes Trump. Yeah. <laughs> well, hey, at least I have something in common with her and I, not Donald Trump. Oh, so I'll, leave it. It. Yeah. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, her, today's her 69th birthday. Wow. No. Yeah. And today is my 58th birthday. Yes. So she's got 11 years on me. It's true, but, I mean, you don't seem a day over 30. Well, thank you. <laughs> I wish I was 30 again. Yeah. Just hey, got the... This oh, the cake at the end? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah. I'll be looking forward to eating that in a little bit. There mm -hmm. we go. All right. Now, this musical mm -hmm. notes will be uh, a big story today because there's not a lot of information on our guest. But in 1958, a journalist asked our guest on today's musical notes, what's it like losing to Perry Mason week after week? <laughs> and our guest says, Hamilton Berger doesn't lose. How can a district attorney lose when he fails to convict an innocent person? Isn't that something? And for nine seasons, our guest repeatedly lost to Perry Mason. We're talking about William Whit Whitney Tallman Jr., known to the world as William Tallman. William Tallman, there he is on the screen, was an American television and movie actor best known for playing Los Angeles District Attorney Hamilton Berger in the long-running series Perry Mason. Tallman was born in Detroit, Michigan. His grandparents, his maternal grandparents were immigrants from England. Tallman served for 30 months in the United States Army in the Pacific Theater of World War II. And he was eventually commissioned to become major during the war, so he went from private to major. And he looks like he's a major there in that scene there. <laughs> yeah, he does. He looks like really angry. It's like, what, did you say Perry Mason? Well, see, this guy was well-rounded in his acting. Even though he hit his stride on Perry Mason, some of his um, acting accomplishments, he began acting on stage, and he was a leading man in the summer stock company at Ivoryton, Connecticut. That's where he got started as far as the acting. He did a film in 1952 called My Lovely. He played a sadistic, psychopathic killer in 1953 in a movie, the film noir called The Hitchhiker. And the New York Times wrote about his performance as the ruthless murderer. He makes the most of the year's juiciest assignments. That's what, uh, that's what New York Times wrote about him. And because of that performance, he got picked up by Gail Patrick Jackson, who was the 
executive producer for CBS for the Perry Mason series, 1957 to 1966, and that's when he hit his stride. But you can see from these clips here, he's done tons of movies. Oh my goodness. I mean, he's done probably over 20 films. The Hitchhiker, as I mentioned, 1955, Big House in USA. He did a movie in, called Crash Out in 55, Smoke Signal in 55, Cavalade in America also that year, and just tons of other movies I wouldn't have time to mention. But as I said, there's not a lot of information about this actor here. He just spent his life acting in plays, drama, and of course, he'll always be remembered as Hamilton Berger on Perry Mason. And I'm gonna quit on that note right there. You know, it's, it's very so. interesting, like, uh, you know, CBS found him through that um, yeah, show where he, he was a criminal. He was a criminal and he got picked up by CBS to, to be his. a prosecutor. Yeah, uh. he, he lost every case. <laughs> to Perry Mason. <laughs> to Perry Mason. That's what was so amusing about it. That's so really funny. Is he, so he's always kind of like the antagonist against Perry Mason most of the time? Yeah, he made Perry Mason's life miserable on that series. Always screaming at him and fussing at the judge and stuff <laughs> over calls and stuff. There's a fine line between a uh, um, criminal prosecutor and a criminal. Yeah, no, I'm yeah. just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, we do have a new art clip, and that was, of course, Musical Notes with ASAP. Um, we have a new, a brand new art clip uh, from our Baron Rick Phillips. It's about the uh, Day of the Dead, and it's uh, featured at the Zootown Arts Community Center. You guys can catch that at the Zootown Arts Community Center until November 7th. But we, up next, we have events going on on Tuesday. So, Thursday. <laughs> Thursday. <laughs> we were just talking about Monday. We were just talking about Monday. Monday is so two days ago. So Thursday is National American Beer Day and Navy Day. So I guess you can like celebrate by drinking, drinking beer and then thanking a Navy. Nope. Man or a woman. Yeah. Okay, so into events. Over at the Providence Center, located on Brooks on Orange Street, we have our NAMI Missoula weekly meeting starting at 10 a.m. It's a free weekly meeting for adults affected by mental illness or interested in learning about NAMI. Then at the Children's Museum of Missoula, they have pumpkin marble painting that starts at 11, and so you can create marble with some orange paint and a piece of paper. They'll teach you how. That sounds awesome. Also at 11, over at Missoula Butterfly House and Insectarium is their Little Bugs Early Education Childhood. Um, early Childhood Education, it starts at 11. And so what it is is they just have bug ambassadors and they teach you, your children, little ones, teach them all about the awesome world of bugs. Yeah. There's Meditation for Veterans at the Learning Center at Red Willow, it starts at 115. And then at NAMI Missoula, located on 202 Brook Street, they've got their Connection Support Group starting at 1.30. It's a free weekly support group for adults living with mental illness. At the Zootown Arts Community Center, they've got Explorations of Art Around the World. This is going to be a class that starts at 2.30. It'll be on Thursdays from 2.30 to 5. It'll be uh, $95 or $85 for members. 
And what it'll be, it'll be from October 20th till December 1st, and they'll be exploring the fascinating avenues of contemporary and historical art making. At the Missoula Public Library, they've got computer electronics in their makerspace that starts at 3 o'clock. Also at 3 are uh, colorful caterpillar creations. This will be at the Missoula Butterfly House and Insectarium. And they will uh, learn all about caterpillars and how they change into butterflies. There is Lego Club at the Missoula Public Library. It starts at 3.30. Also at 3.30 is uh, at the Missoula Insectarium is Spider Feeding. And then at the Clay Studio of Missoula, they're going to have a ceramics class. It's ceramics for ages 9 to 12. It's going to start at 3.30 from October 27th all the way to November 17th. Uh, so it'll be like four class meetings. And so uh, it's $85 per child uh, per session. Oh, wow, that's a lot. So pre-register at uh, 543-0509. And then over the Keep restaurant is Elder Speed Dating. It starts at four o'clock. So these are for those elders that are single and want to go out there and meet someone. Um, and so you can go and I think it's just only maybe like five, I think it's maybe like a minute or two. And you chat and you speed date and then you move around. And I'm sure uh, we've had people on our show before that we've interviewed and they say that there's always more women than men. So hopefully there's some men that want to go out there. Yep. It'll be kind of fun. Like a yeah. fine, like a fine scotch. Like a fine scotch. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> uh, ASAP, would you ever go? I don't know. I guess you're not even hey, considered a you senior yet, let, though. Hey, he just turned 58. You, you know, you got to settle he's, down. I know, he's not even a senior yet. You're not consider, considered a senior until you're like 60, I think. Yeah, I think it's 60 or 62 or something. 65 like if you're 65. like, if you want to get like Social Security, and then like 67 if you want to get full benefits from Social Security, well, which is an extra $100 a month. You're still spry and young. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do if you go, um, you know when they speed date, what if you like the first person? Can you just not like not speed date? Well, you like should at least person? keep your options open ASAP. Yeah. You they should want just be like, what if the person that you like, it, like the person that you like at first can be someone that you eventually learn to hate and someone that you're not sure of is someone you learn to love. Oh, I see, okay. So just think about that. You know, like, that's the speed date. You meet a lot of people and it, you can't be like, oh, it, you can't have the expectation that it's like, oh, I'm going to find my true love right here and there. You oh, God, I was just curious, that's all. Yeah, I guess you have to keep your options open. But if you like the first one, I think you can just get their phone number. Okay, just yeah. curious. Yeah. You yeah. never know. Yeah. Never say no. <laughs> I wonder if they, in bigger cities, they have, like, gold digger speed dating. <laughs> they have million, a millionaire matchmaker. Like, this one lady, like, literally finds millionaire husbands for women who don't want to work ever in their life. That's awful. <laughs> well, some women just want to not work. That sounds terrible. Like, like you know, it's just based on who they are. I've met a couple girls who are just like, I just want to get married and have kids and not worry about anything but that. I know. My sister does. <laughs> my sister's the same way, actually, and I'm just like, okay, cool. Yeah, well, I don't know. Yeah, marry someone in the military, you get basically everything just taken care of, unless they, you know, they get dishonorably discharged. No, it won't happen. Yeah. My sister's husband is in the army, and he's actually going to school to monitor radio waves. Because radio waves are monitored by the government and by the military. And so there's only, like, a few people that know how to do it, but there's an entire school for it. And so he's going to yeah. go to school for that. Yeah. So my sister was telling me about Sounds it. Sounds like she's going like, to be, like, in the NSA. She was like, I'll never have to do anything for the rest of my life. I was like, oh. Oh, good for you. Great. <laughs> I have to wake up at 6 a.m. <laughs> right? Okay. All right. Oh, okay. All right. I guess we're moving on now. It's not a competition. Scott's Scott's making those. Actually, it's been a competition our whole lives. Scott's making those noises. Don't. Do not. You guys see what I have to deal with. Okay. So up next is Flow Yoga with Rasa at the Open Way Mindfulness Center. It starts at five thirty. And then at the University of Montana at 6 is Science Cafe. And so um, Jeff Purnell and Melissa Moore from Galactic Farms will talk about their current aquaponic installation located at the corner store in the Emma B. Lomonson Center at the University. That's pretty sweet. At the Good Food Store, they've got a cooking class. It's Autumn in Korea that starts at 6.30. It's for $25. They're going to be making ginger tea, seaweed salad, beef broth soup with cabbage, fried chicken with soy sauce, and sweet Korean dessert pancake. Yum. At Taste Buds Kitchen, there is a adult BYOB cooking class. They're going to be making some steak. It's $40 per person. 
And then at the University of Montana, the UC Theater, there's a fashion photographer. Her name is Lindsay Adler, and she's going to be coming here at 7 o'clock to be talking all about her career as a fashion photographer. That's probably going to be pretty interesting and insightful. Yeah, her images have been published in almost every top fashion and photography publication in both editorial and commercial capacities. That's pretty sweet. At the Downtown Dance Collective, it's a tap dance for adults. It starts at 7.30. At 8 o'clock is live jazz at Plonk. And then at the Wilma Theater, Warren Miller's Here, There, and Everywhere will be playing at 8. And then at the Sunrise Saloon is the Melody Guy Band at 8.30. Uh, open mic at the Broadway at 9, Dead Hipster at the Badlander at 9, and there will be Rock and Karaoke at the Dark Horse also at 9 o'clock. As always, you guys can check out MissoulaEvents.net, University of Montana website, The Independent, or The Missoulian for more events in your community. Yes, and of course, uh, I do have a new I Am um, poem video extravaganza. So without further ado, here is I Am Statue. I Am Statue. I am statue. Forever bronze to be the symbol of a park I will never see. Looking at people coming and going as if I have nothing better to do. I have a tool in my hand, not knowing whether or not I can use it or depend on it to hold me up. I am statue. I'm new, yet based on the old. I wonder if I'll ever be as old as the man I emulate. Can something that was never alive truly die? Or will I rust once no one has time for me? I am Statue. That was All right, beautiful. that was I Am Statue. But yeah. of course, it's time for your city council report. Um, it's going to be short and sweet, so let's talk about some city council stuff. And uh, the big the big thing is that the city council is talking about their uh, joint uh, meeting that they're going to have with the county commissioners this afternoon around 1.30 p.m. So if you guys, and they're talking about their open space bond. And this is like one of the last times that um, in 2006, the city of Missoula and the county worked together and they did an open space bond. So they purchased open space lands for keeping things open space, and it's mostly just like keeping it more of a public land and public use for people. So yeah, that's what they were talking about. And that's gonna be happening, um, let's throw that up. That's gonna be happening this afternoon at the county courthouse. Um, it's gonna be a $75,000 open space purchase. So that's what they're gonna be spending the money on for that they've uh, accumulated from the bond since 2006. I believe this bond is a 20 year bond. Most bonds are like 20 years, so. This bond will probably last another 10 years. So, of course, uh, they'll be doing this. And if you want to um, go to uh, the meeting, I believe it's this afternoon during the, um, or, you know, like during the county commissioner's meeting, which is every, um, um, I believe it's twice a month, uh, every other uh, Wednesday of the month at 1.30 at the county courthouse now. And their new location, it's a nice location, nice room. But it's it's in the newer, kind of ugly part of the courthouse, you know, with the tall building and you have all the way you get your licensing done. So basically you go through the door and it's your first right. And there's the county commissioner's uh, meeting room. But of course I do have, um, I don't really have many quotes. There was really much talking about there. We're uh, talking about some... Um, uh, I guess a purchasing of some, um, I believe it was uh, rezoning, but that's pretty much it. They're just rezoning some property on Reserve Street. It wasn't much of a ex exciting meeting, but of course this little um, uh, part of the meeting was pretty interesting because uh, I have some bicycle ambassadors from the uh, meeting. They're talking about some of the uh, bicycling, uh, bicycling scene that is happening in Missoula. Cycling has many benefits. Um, that includes fitness and cost savings, just to name a few. But it also increases your overall health, your memory, your stress, and reduces stress and your overall mood. So a few events that we had this summer um, highlighted these benefits of cycling. Uh, we helped organize Walk and Roll Missoula, in which we um, helped to reward daily commuters and encourage new people to try out healthy transpor transportation. Um, we also attended the Back to School Bash um, in coordination with Let's Move Missoula, and we reached out to low-income families um, at the beginning of the school year. And here we discussed safe routes to school with families to encourage active transportation because it's been shown that kids who bike and walk to school are overall better students. Um, we also led two week-long 
camps with bike with parks and recreation. They're called Bike in the Parks. And um, we gave kids the skills to become successful cyclists as children and as adults. And we also um, helped introduce them to the benefits of cycling and the freedom um, that you experience on a bike that um, gives you benefits to your health and um, your mood. All right. So, of course, um, you know, statistics aren't wrong. If you ride your bike, you're better than everybody else. That's true. <laughs> but, of course, that about does it for your city council report. Um, you can find out more. And, of course, all the meetings are happening today. You have a whole bunch of committee meetings happening today. And you can find out that by logging on to www.ci.missoula.mt.us. You can also Google it. You go to your government. You uh, I'll get a nice close-up. And you go to under city council. You go to agenda, webcast, and minutes. And it brings you to this nice little page, and then it can tell you the whole schedule on what you can expect for the meetings to happen right here. Yeah, the first wow. meeting is public safety and health at 10, public works, all that stuff is kind of like, um, oh, actually, pretty much all this stuff is happening. You know, this is only going to be a five-minute meeting for public safety and health. Nice. Uh, public works, <laughs> all, all the shebang bang. And, of course, they have a second city council meeting. So oh. it, Yeah, so it is really surprised me when I saw it like city council meeting and it's going to be happening on Wednesday at 1 30 yep oh yep the that's 26th good. Mm -hmm. so that's and then there is no city council meeting next Monday yeah yep for Halloween I'm assuming um, they want to go dress up and stuff but of course it is the fifth um, Monday of the month which usually they never do uh, city council meetings on the fifth Monday of the month as mm -hmm. well um, I do have our very own uh, favorite segment of the uh, of our Wednesdays it's called Hallmark or Bullmark. <laughs> All right, are you guys ready to play? Yes. If you guys at home don't know how to how this game works, uh, I'm I'm really like, what? Why not? Because yeah, you know we've been doing this for quite a while now. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> I read a synopsis from a Hallmark original movie, or do I? And you guys here and at home, if you guys are watching this at this particular time, um, you can find out whether it's Hallmark or Bullmark. All right, so hence the game homework, Bullmark. Um, are you guys ready to play? Mm -hmm. Are you sure? No, I'm kidding. I don't need to say that again. It's like really annoying when someone says, says "Can I hear you? I can't hear you. I can't hear you." And it's oh, like, it's so it's annoying. so annoying. Just yeah. like get to the song already. I don't want to hear you just babble on. Yeah, Scott. All right, moving on. <sighs> Days in small town Pinebrook seemed peaceful enough until wealthy industrialist Mark Connor came through town. Mark proposes a factory nearby to put Pinebrook on the map of U.S. made goods. For Samantha Goodrich, this couldn't come at the worst time. The land that Mr. Connor is proposing belonged to her recently deceased father. As the two begin to butt heads, they soon realize that a lot of their goals are similar. Can these two find common ground? And the movie's called Groundbreaking. <laughs> Is this a Hallmark original movie, or is this complete bullmark? Mm. Hmm. I'm going to say... I'm going to say Hallmark. You are? Yeah, say I Hallmark? am. Sounds like that's something Scott would write. I know. You can go the other way if you want I know. I've tried, I've tried to decide. Let's see. What do I do? Um, okay, I'm going to say I'm gonna say bullmark. ASAP, you're wrong. <laughs> it is complete Bullmark. Yeah. Are you guys ready to play round two of Hallmark or Bullmark? Let's do this. Um, <coughs> hit it. Henry is a big city musician who gets a gig in small town Connecticut. Oh, Connecticut. <laughs> uh, while there, he meets the beautiful but bossy Jess, who believes that being professional is the route to success. Ooh. As Henry begins to show the small town girl with big city aspirations that you don't have to leave the small town to be successful in life and in love. And the movie is called Heart and Soul. <laughs> <laughs> um, that was a funny title. Yeah, it was. Okay, I'm gonna say this is Hallmark. Yeah, me too. Yeah. You guys are just, um, um, it's Bullmark. I can oh! Made that up. Isn't that really well done? Yeah. Really, it's really well written. It's so vague. I it's thought super it was a, a Hallmark movie. I, I was just like, yeah, how vague movie. can I make this? But I, I, I really like the last line that I wrote. It was just like, a small town girl with big city aspirations that you don't have to have, they don't have to leave the small town to be successful in life 
and love. And in love. Yeah. Oh. Heart and soul. Heart and soul. Because, <laughs> hey. you know, he's like a, I wanted to say, like, he's bluegrass, he's like soul music and all that oh. stuff. Oh. Yeah, so that's that's the story I'm going to make if I uh, actually make this into a movie. Nice, I love that, the bluegrass <laughs> tale. Because, of course, she's in Connecticut. She's in rural Connecticut. Like, in super a tiny rural, little town. Like, terrible rural, like, just like crappy, pigs crappy, everywhere. terrible yeah. Connecticut. Like, you have kids, no parents, just running mm-hmm. around town, like, in gangs. And Living stuff. in the woods, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. and they did, like, dress up as clowns and luring little kids into their <laughs> forest as well. Oh, uh, anyways, That's that terrible. is uh, Hallmark or Bullmark. Thanks yes, for it playing. Is. And, um, We'll have uh, another one next Wednesday. We do it every single Wednesday. Um, this Friday, you can expect us to have a uh, flagship Friday. And hopefully, we'll have another team talk for you guys because we just started doing that. It says I. I hope so, too. <laughs> and I'll have some more city council stuff because they'll be talking about a lot of stuff because there's a lot of things in the works. But there's not nothing really in the city council meetings, but there is a lot of stuff that are happening in the community meetings that are going to be really affecting Missoula, as, as especially as we grow um, inward mm-hmm. which is the kind of like the whole idea of Missoula is like growth inward policy and all that stuff the high density urban development stuff so um, we'll talk more about that this Friday but of course um, if you want more information you can log on to our website wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula so nice we made you write it out twice you can like us on our Facebook page you can follow us on Twitter at wakeupmissoula MCAT also has a Twitter you guys can follow us at MCAT TV Missoula you guys can like us on Facebook and to find out more information or watch us live MCAT.org is the place to go yep and of course uh, this Friday I'll also talk about our live stream which uh, will be uh, Sentinel versus uh, Flathead Indians Um, yeah it'll be a nice little um, fun little final season game for them and of course I'll talk about more about the playoff games as we see as they come up mm-hmm. but for yeah. Wake Up Missoula I'm Scott Ramp and for Wake Up Missoula my name is Noel McVoy here's the birthday boy ASAP Adonai